Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back. We're streaming live from our studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, we have a very unique young lady who wears many different hats, and you'll see her wearing this hat and many others in it as we, as we talk. Let me introduce to you Lube Cabin, or also known as Sister Lube. Welcome, Sister Lube. Hello, thank you for having me, Miss Wendy. Yes, I'm so excited um, because you're such a unique person. There's so much to just um, share about you and your charisma for life and everything that you do. Um, but before we get started, Lube, just tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, it's all God. It all goes to him, all the glory to God. Uh, my name is Lube Cabin. I'm originally from uh, Republic of Palau, and I've been in Hawaii for, I came here in 96, so I've been here for about, what is that, 25, 26 years? Wow. I attended high school here. Yeah. Wow. You don't even look old enough to have gone to high school yet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you come from Palau. Yes. So now, when was the last time you went back to Palau? I went back about maybe, what is it, seven years ago or so uh, wow. for a performance, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you miss Palau? Yes, I do. I do, but uh, Hawaii is uh, very beautiful and, and it's been home to me for uh, this many years, yeah. Wow. So are you here alone or do you have family members with you? I'm here with mom. Oh, wow. Yes. And I know that your mom, she does a lot of community um, service and looking after the people of Palau here in Hawaii. Is that, is mm -hmm. that right? Yes, and also actively involved uh, in the Hawaiian community. Um, she's uh, been an advocate and does a lot of social work for the community here as well. Wow, yeah. and yeah. of course she speaks the language. Yes. So it makes the people from Palau when they come here, they feel even more warm because their, their people are greeting mm -hmm. them here and, mm -hmm. and, and helping with the cultural difference as mm -hmm. they enter into a new lifestyle here in Hawaii, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Palauans uh, and the Micronesian community as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I know that you do a lot of things. You wear a lot of different hats. So please share with us some of your talents or your hobbies. Ooh, okay. So I do music. I've been doing music uh, in Hawaii for the past uh, maybe 10 years or, or a little bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. I also do printing. I've uh, been blessed to be a part of a local brand. Uh, with my screen printing experience, uh, we launched Shigo Apparel, where we uh, build and empower women to know who they really are in the kingdom, you know, kingdom culture. Yes. And uh, I do printing, I do filming. Um, I have a podcast on Moritz TV, where we tackle local issues. We also give a platform to a lot of musicians locally and globally to come on our show and, and share the message of uh, reggae music. Wow. And, and just to encourage, you know, uh, Pacific wow. Islands and also the Caribbean Islands. So, yeah. And I, I mean, do agriculture as well. Wow. When I first met you, I mean, I would not know that you were from Palau or the Micronesian Islands. I mean, that would be not even a guess. I mm -hmm. guess it's your unique hairstyle that I, and is your trademark, I would say. And I would, you know, today it's, it's manageable and smiled. Sometimes mm. I see it all up and what do you call it when it's all up and you have that big bun and mm. wow, you, <laughs> at that yeah. time you look like an entertainer. Yeah, yeah. I've had this hair for uh, a long time and it was all the way up past my knees, but you know, I had to trim and, and you know, have it more weight for me, uh, less weight for me to carry. Wow, it does. It does look like it weighs a lot because you have a lot of, a lot of hair. Mm -hmm. And it's very well, well kept and it's beautiful. I love it. Thank so you. share with us what kind of music, what's your favorite type of music that you perform? I love reggae music. Uh, from you. since a young girl, uh, that's all we were, you know, able to listen to or receive. Uh, Alpha Blondie, Bob Marley, that type of music. So it really grew and has a place in, in my life and, um, and, and what I give when I'm on stage. So. Reggae music really um, is the music that hits me here, the heartbeat, wow. right? So, so tell me, yeah. when you were back in Palau, you listened to a lot of reggae and Bob Marley? Yes, we were limited because the radio station announces, you know, deaths and funerals and, 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 and stuff like that. Now it's more, there's more radio stations, but back then it was one, 
main radio station and we're kind of limited to outside music, but through friends and then being in school and stuff, reggae was big, you know, wow. big in Pacific Islands and also big there. So do you think there are more people back home in Palau that have the same kind of energy towards reggae music uh, and have kind of your look as well, the reggae look? The reggae look, I think that um, <laughs> dreadlocks, yeah, there's a lot of young people that are starting uh, dreadlocks, but uh, reggae music has that island beat, so it's already in us. So in Palau, reggae is big. Hawaiian uh, reggae too is very big there. So, yeah. so no, did you hear of Jawaiian back then? <laughs> when I came to Hawaii, I, I first heard of Jawaiian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went, to, I lived in Saipan, the Marianas Islands, uh -huh. uh, attended high school there too, and then came to finish my high school here. But when uh, wow. I came to Hawaii, that's when I first started, you know, meeting artists and, and like macho, uh, Butch Helamano, those are the guys from back in those days that, you know, carried on the Jawaiian and, and yeah, the headliners. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I know that the 45th annual Pacific Island Forum was held in Palau mm -hmm. and you were one of the headliner uh, artists there. Wow. Mm -hmm. I better get your autograph the next time I see <laughs> <laughs> so you. So know, how, did, yeah. how did that come about and how was that experience to be the headliner you know, there? It's really, I say this is God, uh, Wendy, because mm -hmm. uh, this music, I didn't, I'm a, a nobody from a little town, you know, in Palau. You know, I came here and it's really God that uh, opened doors and connected me to a lot of stuff. So I was able to be in the local scene here, uh, had the opportunity to record with a lot of local producers, RSL Productions, Gatos, uh, Pinky and Thumb, um, Kaipo Kapua, everybody that's kind of in the scene here. Wow. But really God, because my, my calling and my heart was to go back home to share my, the, the gift of music, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, so I lifted, I lifted that up to God, and I was like, "If it's your time and your will, it will happen." But it's been my dream to do that, uh, and uh, it was several many years later. I got a call, and it was like Lube, you know, it was Palau, somebody from Palau, the president's office, calling me. And they said, "We want to invite you. We have this big event for the dignitaries in the Pacific Islands, and uh, your name came up, and we want to invite you." Wow! Like. God, is this you? Still kind of like, is this God? Because in everything I do, I have to like, you know, seek advice from- right, You gotta uh, hear, you gotta feel it from him. him. Right, because wow. if it's not him, I'm not, you know, jumping in. Mm -hmm. So it's like, God, is this you? And the name Kapono Naili Ili, who's a local artist, and that has played with me and helped me in the beginning of my music, along with many others, but uh, came to me. And I was like, let me reach out to him. I said, we have one week to prepare. To <laughs> one week to fly to a foreign country, okay? To pull this <laughs> together. And it was a long event, one week event of just music. Wow. And when I called him, he's like, I'm your guy. Let me get a group together. Don't worry about anything, focus on music and, and uh, tell them yes. So wow. I prayed about it and it was like the confirmation I needed. You know, right. God says, this is, you asked for it. You've aligned yourself. This is uh, for you. The doors is open and so uh, I said yes and uh, we went there it was an amazing experience Wendy. of course well first of all you ask and you shall receive and mm -hmm. so that you did you asked okay. for it and you know I think that's the problem a lot of people are afraid to ask and you know they think oh it's kind of a material thing God I just, but I, I want it but you know what if it's from your heart and you're obedient God will reward and uh, he and he's going to be very generous with it. So you know, I like to encourage everybody out there yeah. that if there is something, I mean, if you're seeking even better quality of health, I mean, I asked God for a better quality of health, mm -hmm. and He answered. And look at me, I always say I'm a titter chick from the west side on this island, but I cried out and I asked God to heal me and help me get healthy. And look at me, and I even have a show on Think Tech Hawaii promoting taking your health back. And so for you. Lube, you cried out and you asked, I want to perform, I want to be, and you know, indirectly, he's given you a great responsibility to be an icon for someone that was uh, from Palau and that was able and granted the opportunity to come out and live here in Hawaii, but you're being obedient to God and to share his glory and his message while you're here, and yet you have the opportunity to take it back home and still shine bright so others will see the way through your life. 
And that's amazing. Right. And, and God says, in his word, he says, if you ask and you shall receive, right? Yes. So let's say I ask and then he, you know, we don't receive. It's unto him. You yes. gonna in be his time. Because All in his time. Right. Yeah, yeah. If he didn't think you were good enough or ready, he wouldn't have allowed you to go and that door would not have opened. But you were obedient. You were faithful. And he knew it was your time. He prepared you for such a time. And the best part is as you went, you honored him and uh, you came back. And so you continue to honor him. And we're going to get into the heart of like getting healthier and promoting good health between here and the, your people here in Hawaii, because every culture needs it, especially when they come to the Western world, you know, and in the, they all want to be like Westerners. And that's where a lot of the downfall comes is that they want to be the fast food industry, gobble, you know, gobble, gobble, eat all that great McDonald's and happy meals. So. I'm glad that you are, I know your epitome of health as well. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. But I also know that when I saw some of your photos, I just wanna uh, ask you, some of the beautiful girls that you were performing with um, when I saw those photos, they looked like they were having costumes very similar to the other Polynesian countries. So like the skirts and then the, you know, the coconut cups for their bra, uh, the bras and the tops. So is that a traditional costume for your people as well? Yes, that's a traditional, and different islands have different uh, uh, addition to that custom, but it's pretty much, yes, the grass skirt and the, the top, wow. and then the, the hair. But yes. those, were, those were the dancers that had performed uh, during that uh, festival, that uh, 45th annual uh, uh, wow. festival, yeah. Wow. Uh, there was a lot of uh, dancers and a lot of local, even the, the men group were, you know, doing their traditional war dance. Mm -hmm. And and the reason when the I say God really made this like the trip of a lifetime, not just for me but also for the band, because I uh, Kapono got to pick a lot of the local musicians, wow. and uh, it was uh, C J Kama, uh, Kaimi, mm -hmm. um, uh, Will Yokoyama, and Mindy Smokestack, and we all went together. And these are Hawaiians, right? Wow. So when we were there, we they got to share the music, Hawaiian music. And you know, the kupunas there, oh, they were in tears just hearing a different <laughs> sound, beautiful, you know, traditional Hawaiian music. We did a little Hawaiian stuff, we did reggae, we did some more, you know, lovers rock reggae, but it was such a nice uh, cultural uh, exchange. And they wow. were so blessed to, to have local musicians from Hawaii come there and, I just give the glory to God to make that happen. Wow, amazing. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I know, you know, many hats and you also helped to publish um, a Palawan language book. I guess it was for your mom, but it benefited so many people more than your mom. Your mom was just the messenger mm -hmm. to get that book out. So mm -hmm. how did that all come about? And what was the reason for that publishing? Right. Of so currently book? in, uh, with our culture, we were slowly losing, uh, our culture and our language. And language is really that thing that holds our culture together. Yes. Uh, a lot of young people, a lot of kids, Palau kids that are in the mainland uh, abroad and also in Palau, living in Palau, are losing that language, yes. right? So uh, my mom and I kind of teamed up together. It's like, how can we uh, bring a solution or do something? And again, it's just God putting that in, in my mom's heart to want to do it you know and we were thinking about our, my nieces uh, that are half Samoans half Palauans half Tahitians half Palauans and how we can do something for them to learn the language but it was uh, really uh, my mom is also a language uh, uh, a curriculum writer in Palau before we left so oh. she has yeah she has that uh, experience so um, it was God that just allowed that to happen we published it and uh, a lot of people have ordered the book and it's really and i'm very thankful that their kids can get to learn you know uh, body uh, bodies and shapes and colors and counting mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and that's my oh, mom so the, she's the author i'm just the the one who's you know published and and help her publish. right you were her buddy and we all need a buddy mm -hmm. and so you know you're actually not even knowing how valuable that book is. It is so valuable. I had a gal on my last show from Tahiti mm -hmm. and also just like the Hawaiian language at one point, 
it becomes a dying language. Right. And so what you've done is you're resurrecting it and you're going to continue to instill upon your people to t continue to take pride in their culture, no matter where they go. And it's up to you guys, the elders, to make sure that it doesn't die and make sure that it is exciting for them as it is for you, whether you're here or back in your country, it should never die. So it does take work and you all did it by publishing this book to continue the, the onset of the language and not let it go uh, silent. So touche and congratulations to you and your mother for working on that cultural building block that you guys you, did. Yeah. So, you know, when I first met you, you were working on a rooftop. <laughs> That's when I first met you. So how was it like working up there, up on the roof? Wow. Amazing. <laughs> uh, we we, ha we uh, have a full aquaponics, hydroponics. We had the opportunity to really be immersed in the community, uh, helping the homeless people that come to the shelter. The rooftop was on top of the women's shelter. And so it was one of the most rewarding uh, jobs I've ever done in my life, Wendy. Wow. Um, because there was a, you know, there's a, we have a problem uh, here in Hawaii with homelessness. And mm -hmm. we see people, we say, oh, homeless, right? It's a person without a home, right? A houseless person, it's a person without a, a house. So house. it's a person first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a human being, and then that's just the situation or circumstance, right? And uh, that really grew me to uh, humility and also seeing people for who they are and not their circumstance. And God allowed me to take that job because, uh, like I said, I, all the glory goes to him because um, he opened the doors and I started as a part-time and I became a lead. Uh, running that program um, it was such a joy and blessing because sometimes we have people that come they just need somebody to listen they just mm -hmm. need to rest with all of everything that's happened you know um, so we have to create like a peaceful environment with plants and agriculture it's, it gives you that nature gives you that um, and just be there to share and give you know and then also receive and see people for who they are, yeah, not their circumstance. So that's that's amazing. And like you said, it's all it's all God because you're a, I want to say you're a musician, you're an entertainer, uh, you're a book writer, and now you are an agricultural specialist. And who would have thought, like, wow, right? I mean, you and I are pretty much in the same book boat because I I mean I had no pleasure in growing or doing any of this, but like yourself, we've grown to love it. And so now you find yourself as a specialist. That's amazing. And I, I seen your produce that you produce up on the rooftop, all that beautiful lettuce and everything. And so when you work with the people from the shelter, are they allowed or do they get served the food that you guys grow as well? Or is it just for uh, retail? Yes. Uh, so now the program, uh, that's the main goal of that program is to uh, feed the kitchen. I think when COVID happened, uh, we realized, you know, because stuff were being cut and access to the kitchen, food to the kitchen was kind of short. So um, it really woke us up to, we have to start uh, uh, making sure that the kitchen uh, first comes first and that the clients have food. And we also distribute to Kokua Market and Down to Earth. Um, wow. Yeah, when we have extra, yeah. Wow. And that's amazing. That's the most amazing part for me is that you're able to create um, like non-GMO, chemical-free vegetables, and you're giving the people, the houseless people, the people from the street, the best quality. It's God's food that you're pre preparing for them. It's not, you know, like a lot of times at the shelters, we get all the leftovers and the close to date, but you're giving them the best. And um, I'm praying that they understand and they realize how blessed they are by being there at your shelter, that they're getting the best quality of food that you all are preparing. So are you not only we give them, they they grow it. So they go to the class, they get the skills, and then they're they're the ones who run that rooftop. Wow. Yeah. And that's even more um, worthwhile because when you teach someone how to grow or how to fish, 
<laughs> it's even more valuable than just giving them the fish. Right. So what a great program. No wonder you feel so blessed. Are you still working there now? I'm no longer there because of uh, COVID. There was a, 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 a termination. Uh -huh. um, so I, it's, there's a case pending. Mm -hmm. um, I just lift it to God because I really love that job. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you became the agricultural specialist. And so maybe um, we'll yeah, just give it to God and he'll figure it out and help you figure it out. And probably a, a few more doors have already opened yeah. as you left. So um, I know that you're going to look for it and it's going to be right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. So now that you're not working on the rooftop, are you still actively involved in agriculture? I and try to do so. Yes, what I try to be as much as I can. Uh, right now, I'm teaming with a local church, Light of the World Ministry. The pastor uh, has some property and has uh, given the opportunity to grow. Um, also, uh, friends that are farmers were in agriculture school, the Go Farm people, and also um, the Hawaiian Sovereignty Groups, uh, Jamie Rodriguez, who leads the Food Sovereignty Movement. So anywhere I see, and I just say, God, you open the doors, I, I'm in there. But my thing is just to really give myself. And that's what it is. We're in a society in a time now. That's more of me, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. But that's not our, this is not our culture. Island people, this is not us. Yeah. Yeah. We're always, we and how do we grow community? How do we get involved? Somebody right. buys, we go and we help, you know. Right. And this is uh, the... The culture that we need to hold on to right and and also kingdom culture is like yeah. that right kingdom builders <laughs> yeah. right. wow so wow. i try to be wherever uh it needs help people got land or whatever we're in there and we try to uh, utilize and regenerate and and do a sustainable farm small farm wow so i can hear the passion in your heart i mean from entertainer to Farmer, that's so so cool, and like, I know that you are truly, that you love truly, you truly love working in the aina, and your heart is truly working with the people and God's people, giving them the best quality of food, and working towards food sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So, how are you going about handling this, uh, tackling this issue of, you know, food sovereignty and being mm -hmm. more sustainable with what we can produce here on our on our islands? Right. God, God's word says, do, do with what you have and what you can, right? You have a skill, you have a little land. People have land to give for us to grow. You let us know and we come in. I was blessed to meet up with uh, Jamie Rodriguez from OFH during the Freedom Fighter rally. And so she's already leading that. And when she found out I do uh, agriculture and I was going through this thing with my job, she was like, hey, get an opportunity to come in and you share what you know, and then receive what you need to know, uh, and uh, let's just work together as a community. So that's okay. where uh, we try. And with OFH, they're doing the best they can with no funding, right? So it is this community. Jamie goes out there, uh, we have produce to give. Nobody has to pay for anything, right? Mm. So they come, they get their produce, and then other farms be like, donate to her. There's some produce, and we're just sharing produce like that and that's really uh, a movement that she's leading and I'm just really happy to be a part of something like that that's more you know on that local level wow and not so much making money or anything like that it's just really to cool. help you know help mm -hmm. each other. so you know tell me now like you're what you are currently doing and how did you get involved with volunteering with OFH mm -hmm. occupied forces Hawaiian how does one be able to also get involved and volunteer along your site? Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie Rodriguez uh, leads that movement. It's a, uh, I'll put it on the comment. If people mm -hmm. want to, I'll put a link there. Uh, but, um, you know, you just allow yourself to be a vessel. And I think God puts it in people's hearts, right? To uh, jump into certain things. Uh, one thing uh, to keep in mind, I just, uh, what is the greater good and what do you want for me because i don't want to uh, jump into something that's you know maybe not uh, wasn't from god or it's not for a good cause and stuff but 
uh, it's a blessing to to be able to help them. And Jamie leads that movement. She's on Facebook, Jamie Rodriguez. Um, I just go in there whenever they need me. There's a, a Malama Aina and work days. We're there and we invite the public to come too. So I'll leave the link. People interested, they can contact her or, or click that link to, to come and be a part. Wow. Yeah. So amazing. And so that's how it all works. I mean, you wearing so many different hats and everything that God gave to you in your life, you know, you're going to see the exact picture that and plan that he has for you. And the best part is that you are living it. You're being obedient. You're serving, you're growing food. Not only are you growing food, you're teaching others, especially the less fortunate to have that quality of food that you are all producing. And then allowing them to want more and to be more through everything that you guys are doing there. And so I'm just so excited, um, Lube, that mm -hmm. you were, you, you know, you didn't, you, you knew what you had to do. When the door was closed, you, you, you went, but you used all your passion and your drive for wanting to better Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying and I know that God has a plan for you that not only here in Hawaii will you be using your engineering uh, of, of plants and, and your specialty with, in, in agriculture, but you also be able to one day go back and share it with the people of Palau so that they also would have the zest for life, the quality of life to eating the food from their earth or raised up on the earth so that they can refresh their bodies and refuel their souls by eating the food that he created for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I'm so excited for you. Um, and just knowing that I, I get to partner with you one day in the Aina, I'm gonna be having dirt in my nails with you. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> so you gotta we always talk about it. You gotta come. <laughs> I will. I shall come. And you know, Hawaii was agricultural strong before. We yeah. grew Hawaii strong before, and we can grow Hawaii strong again. Let's grow Hawaii strong and yes. energy like what you have, and the, the teaching that you're doing with everyone around. I know it can be done. Mm -hmm. But Lube, for now, we've run out of time for today. I just wanted to say mahalo to Lube Kevin. Sister Lube, for taking time out of your busy agricultural schedule to share your heart with all of us as you grow Hawaii. So we'll be back in two weeks with more Taking Your Health Back with Wendy Lowe. Mahalo Lube and congratulations. Mahalo. Job well Thank done, my you. sister. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.